Hello and welcome to Making Waves by Todderbert. If you enjoy kit building, making electronic circuits, and other do-it-yourself projects, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you miss any of my most excellent videos. In front of us we have a kit from Alenco. This is model number XP-15K. This is a regulated variable supply kit. I found this on Amazon for a total of 27 bucks. I thought it would be a really cool kit to feature on this channel. It has a variety of uses, and the major one is radio repair. You may find yourself an old Panasonic or an old Sony, and it might need some cleaning, might need some adjusting, and you might have it out of the enclosure, and you find yourself finding that you can't really hook up the batteries to it. But this, you can. You run your leads from here to the radio, and you adjust the voltage to, the, to match the radio's needed current. So that's awesome. I use this on my desk all the time. So let's go take a look at this. Here's the box came in. We got the model number right here. Learn to solder and build. Love it. Output voltage is 0 to 15 volts. Output currents. Nice. If you look here, these currents are perfect for portable radios because they don't require much. Uh, input voltage, 120 AC. We have some protected, probably fuse protected. This is a handy portable power supply for students, technicians, and hobbyists. Ideal for breadboarding and prototyping. So yeah, if you're looking to build your own radios, this will work well too. Ages 12 and up. Learn by doing. Okay, I think that's about it. I'm just going to this on the side here. I didn't really look at this box too much, but I don't want to spend too much time on the box. But you get the idea. Oh, here on the back. It's got a bunch of parts it's showing. We're going to go through them real quick, I guess. And uh, see, yeah, I haven't opened this up yet, really. Um, there's the completed project. Required tools, soldering iron, Phillips screwdriver, cutters, and long nose pliers. Seems pretty simple. There we go. Okay, let's open this up. This is a newer style box, I noticed. It's got that green color. I like it. All right, build, learn, and discover. There you go. Okay, so here we are. Inside the box, we got an enclosure, it looks like. Pull that out. Looks like there's a white box. Oh, it's pretty heavy. It's probably the transformer. Got some packing material here. Pull that out. Okay, let's look at AC cord. Is it to power it? And then let's see what else we got. Looks like we got some kind of decal, maybe. Yep. There you go. And then we got the instructions. Yeah, we'll go through really quick. And then let me get this box out of the way. We're going to lower this down so we can take a close look at what we have. So I'm going to bring this down, down. Okay, so what they provided for us, let's see, we got the little front here. Alenco regulated power supply, model XP15, DC voltage. We have a uh, positive negative terminal there. It looks like our adjustment right there. Very nice. So simple decal. Here we have the box. It just opened up when I grabbed it. Inside the box looks like all the components. There you go, simple enclosure. Again, I think this is going to go right on top of here. This makes sense. So that's what that's going to look like when it's done. It's going to have stuff coming out of there. Cool stuff. Put that over there. In the bag, it's sealed, but it looks like we had some lead-free solder. I don't really like using that stuff. <laughs> it's not fun. I recommend you go out and get yourself some of the uh, 6040 um, in this uh, diameter right here. Uh, and you can get this. I'll, I'll put links down below for the solder. Uh, you probably won't find Radio Shake, but like the Kesters is good. Same stuff. Rosin core, perfect for this project. Um, looks like we got a PCB board there. Looks like we got some terminals. I'm seeing some resistors, some diodes, a power LED. That's nice. Um, some large capacitors. Uh, be careful with those when you're installing those. Okay, make sure you get the polarity right because that wouldn't be a nice sound if that one off. <laughs> I've never popped electrolytic, but I'm sure it doesn't sound good. There's our variable potentiometer there. And, uh, yeah, there's the front of the board. So, you know what? I'm going to open this up here so you can see that board better. And see what we're doing. Okay, here's that board. There you go. So, we can get that in focus. The white paper would look better. So, yeah, here you go. It's like a pretty simple board. Okay. And then we have uh, other stuff here. We have our... Or those parts, like a heat sink there, some knobs, terminals. Very cool. Looking forward to building this. Some kind of sleeve protector there. There's that lead-free solder. 
Yeah, I'm not going to use that stuff. Ugh. It just doesn't uh, melt right. So what else we got here? All right. Got big fat capacitor. What's that thing rated at? 2200 micro or microfarad. Holy cow. It's pretty awesome. 470. My little guy. So we got some small capacitors. Looks like we got a voltage regulator right there. Bunch of hardware. Diodes, resistors, and an LED. And it looks like some feet for the bottom. So there's that. And, you know, the awesome thing about these kits is the instructions from Elenco. They're very, very detailed. Um, this is all made in the USA. Uh, that's the beautiful thing of it. So it's very easy to understand and build your kit. So they'll probably go through in some nice detail. I'll even have a learn how to solder set up here. There you go. Okay, pretty basic. Um, there's the transfer. Oh, yeah, I'll show you that. And you probably have testing. So when you're done with your kit, um, you're going to probably need a, uh, a voltmeter so you know what's uh, what this thing's producing. And uh, yeah, I'm sure they're pretty inexpensive. I'll put some links down below again. Oh yeah, quiz. <laughs> Gotta love quizzes. Okay, so there's that. All right. So again, pretty basic. Oh, on the back, they got a nice schematic of the power supply. This is pretty neat because you could prototype your own and build your own with this schematic. It's kind of neat, especially if you have a box full of parts. That might work. All right. So yeah, the last one here. We had, well, we had the cord. Be do AC cord. And then we have the transformer. This is the heart and soul of the power supply. This is what's going to convert the AC to DC current and let you regulate it. Now, regulate it's nice. It's nice and linear. This is one hefty transformer. Holy cow. Very nice. So there are the primary wires here. So there are the input. So yeah, look at this bad boy. This is going to be neat. So there it is. Um, this is going to be a fun kit to build. Let's see if I can get the other piece here. Transformer. There you go. There's our little board. Okay, so what I'm going to do is fade to black and come back with pictures of the build process. And then what we'll do is I'll try to find a radio, take it apart, and show you how that works, where you can try to repair the radio, how you hook it up to it. And, of course, we could also do like a flashing circuit, and we could power, like, say, my Christmas tree that I built in Christmas uh, without having to use batteries. I hook this up to it. So pretty neat. Okay, guys, we'll be right back. Here are pictures of the build process. In his first picture, I installed the output terminals and transformer into half of the enclosure. Two red wires were cut from the transformer to be used in a later step. In this next picture, I populated the PCB with eight diodes and three resistors. Always start out with the smallest components first, makes the build go very smooth. In this next picture, I added three capacitors, noting polarity. I installed the output wires that were reused from the transformer. Next, I installed the LM317 regulator. I used some heatsink compound I had for the heatsink connection to the regulator. That's something you can do as an option. Fourth picture, add the LED and potentiometer to the back side of the PCB. Note the height of the LED. If you get it wrong, it won't quite fit the enclosure. This last picture, I made all final wire connections. Note the position of the three wires from the transformer to the PCB. These are very important. All right, let's go to Frost with the complete project. Yeah, it's done. Uh, turned on, plugged in. Uh, there it is. Nice enclosure. I'm liking this project. Um, as you can see, here's our AC in right there. Uh, you also want to use a pair of vice grips for this connection. That's what I had to use. Normal pliers weren't getting it crimped properly, so a nice heavy-duty pair of vice grips does the job to get this strain relief plug locked on that cord. Your transformer is behind these two screws here. And your PCB board is actually supported by the resistor right here with its fastener. There's the LED coming through and our terminals, positive and negative for our DC output. A really simple design. Um, in the manual, they actually go over in the end a little quiz on how, what's going on actually with the whole circuit, how the transformer works as bringing the 120 to 18 volts, and 18 volts going into the board, and how the board fully rectifies that signal to DC 
and how it reduces and smooths out the DC current uh, to give you a nice variable output. It's regulated by that 317 IFC. A really cool setup. I'm enjoying this. Um, really good learning project, especially with power supplies. I never built a power supply before, and this was definitely worth it. A lot of fun. Let's give you some dimensions of how big this is. Um, we're three and three quarters across. We're six and a quarter inches tall. And have a depth of three inches. That includes the terminals here. As you can tell, it's vented. They do give you some felt feet if you need to use them. Also, this box will stand like this on your desk, which I find pretty nice. Um, I actually have some optional wires attached, and we're going to do a little demo of what I would use this for in a typical bench situation. All right now, I have it set at 3 volts, but I'll double check that with a voltmeter. Now, you can use any kind of voltmeter. This one here is a voltmeter and an ammeter. Um, I've been using this little cheapy Radio Shack for a long time, and you know, I still use it. It's still on the bench here, and I use this for mainly checking volts and continuity and even resistance. But uh, yeah, I figured I'd bring out the bigger voltmeter so we can see what's going on. So let's go ahead and turn this on to DC. We'll take a reading of what voltage is coming out of the power supply. It would be neat if it had a digital, and somebody might be able to add that into the circuit. But for most general use, I usually do this to double check what's coming on the output of a variable power supply, just to be on the safe side. So right now, get a good connection here. This is actually meant to go on PCB boards as probes. Um, so we got a 3 volts approximately right there. Um, to get a fine tune, you have to do quite a bit of adjustment to get it that close. So there we are. What we're going to do here is we're going to actually hook up my little wires I made to a typical circuit that I would be working on. So say I had this radio. Just imagine that everything's taken out of it and you can't put batteries in. But you still have your positive negative terminals to hook up to while you test your recapping or your calibration. So what I'll do is I'll hook up this radio and show you how this is. So this runs on 3 volts. We know it's at 3 volts right now. I put together a simple two little wire connection here with some basic little alligator clips I had laying around. And we're just going to clip these connections to Norning Polarity to the radio. So right now I'm going to try to do this on camera. So there's our positive lead. Now if you touch these, this is a short circuit protected, which is nice, so you don't have to worry about blowing it up. It also, if it overheats, it'll also shut off. Also, it'll also shut off, which means if you try to pull too much current, it'll actually stop running and reset itself. So there we go. We'll hook up negative, and we'll turn on the radio. Gotta watch what it's <laughs> taking the gain away from the capacitor by touching the terminal. Um, so yeah, you can tune it. This is an AM radio, by the way. Panasonic AM only radio. It is a little melted in the front there in the single battery cover, so I figure it's a good candidate for maybe a transplant or parts. We'll figure it out. But uh, you can take and work on a radio, do recap, do some adjustments while it's out of the chassis. That works out really nice. That's the main reason why I'd recommend this, for me anyway. So we'll go ahead and turn this off. Also, if you're into prototyping, this is always fun. I built this little circuit back when I was a teenager, so don't judge me. <laughs> it's a little tiny, uh, let's see if I can see it on camera here. It's a little flasher LED, let's see if I can get that into focus. Bring that up there. So it consists of uh, the four resistors, two LEDs, two capacitors, and two transistors opposing, and it uh, I think it discharges the capacitors at a certain rate and flashes the LEDs. And you can see it's an old breadboard. The back's got some old glue. I don't even know what I used. <laughs> Those are my first solder joints I ever made. <laughs> it's got a history there, Totterbird history. Okay, so we'll hook this up. Now it is marked. I think I marked it 3 volts back in the day. Can we get that into focus? Come on. Yeah, it says 3 volts. And then positive is on the top here, so we're going to hook up our positive lead. And then we'll hook up our negative lead and see if this thing flashes. It's been a while, I don't know if it will. Let's go ahead and hook up the bottom connector here. And this is good for prototyping, so if you have yourself a um, one of those breadboards, you can use this as a, a bench supply, so you can test your low power uh, 
circuits. This, I think this goes like, I'll look in the book again with you, but 100 milliamp hours at the higher voltages. I think it's 200 as you lower it down. So you, I think it goes up to a third of an amp at the lower uh, voltages. Like at 3 volts, you're probably getting 300 milliamp hours. Nice thing about that is that you'll be able to power most radios, which is great. Bigger radios, you're going to need a bigger power supply. But uh, for most small portable radio repair, this will be just fine. So there's my little circuit blinking away. Sweet. And then we can test it on a new little flashlight kit I built. This little IC station, I think it runs on 1.5 volt, single AAA battery. So we can test this. Let's go ahead and just take this out of here. See, I touch these together. You can see the LED dims, but then it recovers. So shorting out the power supply is not a big deal. So we'll take this out and we're going to adjust down to the right voltage. So let's go ahead and see if it recovered on my voltage here. I just I like to do this, clip the one of these wires so it doesn't touch. So let's see if we can get this uh, recovered here. Okay, I'm just bumping these probes. Okay, so what we want to do, so I want to get the reading down to one, uh, excuse me, 1.5 volts. So let's bring it down. Okay, it starts getting more sensitive there on this scale. Okay, so we're about 1.5. Let's then get it closer. I'm barely moving this potentiometer, by the way. Okay, so it says it moves by a tenth of a volt. That's how accurate it is. There we go. So we're pretty much at 1.5 volts, and it should be able to power our little LED. Let's give it a shot. So noting polarity, um, we have positive here. This is pretty cool because the breadboard has little connections on the back. We'll just connect it here. We should come into focus. Take our common, bring it over here, and then when we press the button, it should light up. There we go. So you can test your circuits out this way, which is really nice. All right, pull that out there. There's that. So yeah, pretty much showed you three things you can do with this. Um, there's quite a quite a few things you can. Um, you do Arduino projects with it and everything, as long as they're simple and low power. Let's get this out of the way here. And uh, yeah, I love having this. Um, like I said, short protection, um, overload, protected. I mean, it does all that. So that's a really neat feature. So the XP15 um, X, I believe, or 15K, excuse me, XP15K. Um, when I was putting this together, I did have the wrong screws. They included two sheet metal screws instead of two machine screws. I was kind of like, oh man. So I called them up and uh, they sent out the replacement screws right away. So if you have a missing part, they're really cool about changing and, and getting that part to you in the mail. Um, I said to wait a couple of days, you know, before I could finish putting it together. Not a big deal, but uh, if you are missing or have the wrong parts, definitely just email them or, or give them a call and they take care of you. Um, and then, of course, yeah, quite the learning project. I enjoyed it. Um, it is a little bit more money. I think it's like $27 project. But you get something you're going to use uh, in the future, you're going to be fixing your radios because you're learning how to solder. You're learning how to desolder components because, you know, that's real important. If you're going to be into radio repair, and you, most of the time you need to recap. And so you learn how to desolder and solder new capacitors in. Nice thing is to have this plugged here so you can test your circuit without having to put it all back in. Um, it's just a nice way um, of testing and having the ability to power your devices on the go while you're working on them. So there it is for those who don't have one. There you go. Now you can build your own. I think that's cool, building your own power supply, you know, building your own radio, your own power supply, um, just these different kits to help you build radios. Really into it and uh, looking forward to future kits. And, you know, so maybe some old Heath kits would be cool, or old Archer kits. I'm thinking I'm looking around for some uh, to build. be awesome. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the Elenco Model XP 15K build, please give me a big like. You guys are awesome. Two, if you like Elenco products, uh, check out the uh, Build Your First or Learn to Solder or Expert Solder, I forget what I called it. Um, it's their first kit. It's like an introductory kit to soldering. If you don't know how to solder, that kit's like 13 bucks and it comes with a soldering iron. It's fantastic. Made by the same company. Um, you'll love it. It comes with an iron you can use to build this kit. Um, the only thing I would recommend is possibly um, some solder that's uh, 6040. It's uh, a better uh, melt, lowered melting temperature, a lot easier to work with. I'll have links below to all that stuff so you have an idea, kind of what I've been using and what would be easy to use for you as you make your way through becoming an expert. <laughs> that's what it's about. 
All right, guys, um, comment below too what you think about this power supply. Do you think this would be uh, useful on your bench? Uh, people buy the pre-made ones and they're like about the same price and they have digital readouts and everything. But I kind of like the old school. I like the old big transformer. No noise on the AM circuit, if you noticed. It wasn't producing any hum or any kind of uh, feedback, which is nice. Nice clean power going to that device. So I do like that. All right, guys, take care and we'll see you in the next video.